With the release of lower cost cinema lenses, more and more people ask us how and why you need to shim your lenses. So in this video, we'll be going over why you may need to shim your lens and the best way for you to do it with a limited kit. Cinema lenses are designed to be as accurate as possible. So while they are being used on set, crew can work as fast and efficiently as possible. This means that they are engineered with this in mind. However, there are several factors that can affect how your lens is performing. Common issues associated with a lens that needs to be shimmed will be their focus scales not lining up with the actual measured focus distance, not being able to get sharp images at infinity on a lens, and with zooms that have been designed to be parfocal, not performing as such. All of these are important factors of a lens's performance, so when your lens or camera mount is out, this can be annoying. We get asked constantly, how many shims do I need to add to make this lens parfocal for this camera? And there is no perfect answer. This is because lens mounts on cameras can need back focusing themselves. When shimming a camera's mount, what you are doing is making sure that the distance from the lens mount to the sensor is the exact distance needed for that mount's specification, aka 44mm for EF or 52mm for PL. Some cameras will not allow you to do this though, but others will. And this is part of why giving an answer to I, I have this camera and I have this lens, how much shim do I need to hit my marks or make my zoom par focal is really difficult as camera mounts can shift over time and not be perfectly back focused. We have instruments such as the DENS flange depth controller, which are designed to measure this flange depth and allow us to correctly adjust the mount. If your camera can have its mount adjusted, our engineering department can do that for a small fee. However, if you follow the method we demonstrate in this video, your lenses will be adjusted to compensate if your camera is out. Just bear in mind that this means that they may be out when using them with another camera or adapter. Lenses are delicate imaging tools. So when doing this yourself, it's worth taking your time and preparing yourself and your work area. I would suggest doing this in a clean and as dust free as you can get environment. I would also suggest a solid worktop for taking the mount off of your lens and a spare lens cap to put your mount screws into if your lens has them, though you may be able to keep them in the mount. We are lucky enough to have a full lens engineering department with access to a range of tools that our fantastic staff use to service lenses, two of which are really useful for shimming lenses, a projector and a collimator. Obviously not everyone will have access to the level of equipment we do here in our engineering department, but that doesn't mean that you can't adjust your lenses yourself. For this, you will need a few pieces of kit. For your camera, make sure you have the exact adapter you are going to use if you're going to be using your lens mounted onto one. A solid tripod, a tape measure of some kind, ideally one that you can hook onto your sensor mark if your camera has it, or a laser tape measure which we find the easiest to use. You will then need any associated tools which will depend on what your lenses manufacturers suggest or provide. A good monitor to make sure you are focused is also worth grabbing. This could be an onboard monitor or even an old HDMI one like a TV or PC monitor. I would also suggest grabbing a pair of angled needle nose tweezers for grabbing shims. I would also Google the brand of your lens to see if that manufacturer has some kind of guide of their recommended shimming process or at least a chart to help identify their shims. Also grab some kind of way to take notes of the readings you'll need to be making. Let's start off walking you through how to shim a prime lens, then we'll look at a zoom. For our examples here, we have used a Zeiss Supreme Radiance and a DZO Pictor zoom. Grab a focus chart, we've put a download to one in the description below, but you can also buy them, which we've also put links for in the description, or even just use a newspaper if you really are on a budget. Mount your camera onto your tripod, attach your lens, and make sure your monitor, if you have one, is plugged in. Open up your iris wide open, Position your chart and camera 1.5 meters away from each other. This can really be any distance. Different manufacturers will suggest different ones in their manuals, and you can always go closer if you don't have the space. Really though, the main thing is to make sure you pick a distance that is marked on your focus scale ring. Make sure you're using the sensor mark or phi mark on your camera. It looks like this. To measure from the chart to your camera and make sure your camera is as square onto the chart as possible. Some cameras will have a tape hook at this position so you can hook a tape measure onto it to make things easier. Now focus your lens on the center of the chart. If you've got a nice monitor, use that, or you can use your onboard camera monitor to focus. I would suggest punching in if your camera has that to make sure your image is 100% sharp. 
You can also use Peking or any other focusing assist tools if you have them available. Once you've got the image as sharp as you can, take a note of what your lens's focus mark says. We can then look at the difference between your lens's focus mark and the actual distance your camera is from the focus point and work out how many and what shims you need to add or remove. If the distance your lens is sharpest is under your measured distance, you'll need to add shims. And if it is over your measured distance, you'll need to remove shims. Each manufacturer will have a different set of shims and guides to them. This can be a great way to easily gauge how much a certain shim will change it. Most will have their thickness in microns noted on them. Handle these with care though, especially if they are thin ones. Bent shims will affect the back focus and potentially the optical alignment. You will now have to take your lens off carefully, take off the mount and get access to your shims. The way you take the mount off of your given lens will depend on the lens. I would suggest googling your lens and seeing if the manufacturer has provided any guides on this. However, most of the time they can be quite easy if the system has been designed well. Take the Zeiss Supreme Radiance we have here for example. The mount is held on by these screws on the back of the mount, so all you have to do is unscrew them and the mount will become loose for you to lift off carefully. You will need to be careful here if your lens has any kind of electronics as some of these systems will use delicate ribbon cables. You can then add or remove the shim or shims that will get you closest and put your lens back together to retest. When adding and removing shims, I would suggest using the pair of tweezers I recommended earlier and being very careful. When putting shims back in, the orientation it needs to be in will change depending on the lens, but normally you will need to keep an eye out for locating pins and holes. These are used to locate shims and mounts to keep things in the correct orientation, so keep an eye out for them. A general rule is to have your thinnest shim go in first, placing each thicker shim on top. Zeiss also recommend only having three shims in their lenses in total, and ideally not two of the same shim. This is not necessarily a problem for lenses with metal shims though, Cooks tend to be full of shims. I would suggest googling your lenses brand's shimming process to double check the best practices they recommend. When putting your lens back together, please make sure to check if your lens manufacturer requires a specific torque rating. Zeiss, for example, require you to use a T6 Torx wrench with your torque set to 0.4 Newton meters, but some will not. Now you can put your lens back onto your camera, making sure the iris is still wide open. Re-measure your distance from the sensor to the chart to double check if the camera's moved or the tripod's moved at all. Now focus your lens, hopefully it will now hit its mark. If not, you may need to add or remove shims again. You can now repeat this process until you are happy with the accuracy of the focus marks on your lens. With zoom lenses, the process is very similar. Depending on your lens, you may have to adjust shims or you'll be able to adjust your back focus using a mechanism built into the lens, such as with most broadcast lenses, as well as some cine lenses such as the Fujinon MKs and the Canon CN zooms. For this example, we'll be using the Dizolo Pictor zooms. However, the process will be the same for lenses with built-in back focus adjustments, but instead of adjusting the shim amount, you can just adjust it using the back focus system of your lens. Anyway, you can follow the same prep and protocol that we've just spoken about, but simply change how you are reading the lens. Zoom in all the way and focus until the chart is sharp. Note down focus distance as S1 here. Zoom out all the way and focus until the chart is sharp. Note down focus distance here as S2. We can now look at Dizolo's chart of how much shim to adjust based on these two measurements. If S2 is less than S1, increasing the shim is needed. If S2 is greater than S1, decreasing the shim is needed. To see how much by, we can use Dizolo's chart that they provide based on their shims. We can then do as we did with the Prime by swapping out the shims and putting your lens back onto the camera. We can now check the focus marks and the parfocalness until we are happy and you're done. It's worth considering that when shimming a lens to be parfocal, the focus scale may need to be adjusted. Some lenses such as the Pictor zooms cannot have their focus scale adjusted and are often off with their focus marks when shimmed to be parfocal. It's also worth noting that some manufacturers do not recommend shims are touched as this can upset optical quality. For example, Atlas, who instead say to move the focus scale ring instead, which they have made easy to do. So make sure to Google your lens and see what method your lenses manufacturer suggests. We hope this video has helped you out.
And if you have any further questions, let us know down in the comments below. If you're struggling with this or would rather a professional lens technician do this for you, get in contact with us via the details in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.